I grew up in the South in a town where Judy Blume's books were seen as taboo. So <laughs> I was kind of hesitant to read Judy Blume because I thought they were, you know, risque and I didn't want to be that bad girl reading the risque book. Judy Blume Forever celebrates the life, the legacy, the cultural magnitude of a fearless author who helped us all understand ourselves and challenged society's fears about women's bodies and women's autonomy. I was a lifelong fan. I you know, grew up reading Judy Bloom, and her books were definitely the ones that I went back to again and again until they were kind of threadbare. But I hadn't really thought about her in the last you know, 25, 30 years until my kids encountered her work for the very first time. We were on a really long road trip to Nova Scotia from New York, and I decided on a whim to turn on a, the audiobook of Tales of the Fourth Grade Nothing, which is one of her really early books. And she narrates it herself. And I, I didn't realize that at the time, but when I hit play, this amazing voice kind of filled the car. The kids were kind of spellbound. And I think I had almost like a visceral reaction to hearing, hearing the words of that story that I knew so well, but also realizing there was a person behind them. And suddenly I just, I wanted to know who was Judy Bloom? Whatever happened to Judy Bloom? And I, you know, immediately just out of curiosity started looking into her. And then I think a filmmaker curiosity took over. So she, I mean, she was definitely hesitant. She's got a really busy life running a bookstore in Key West. And I think she just wasn't sure if she wanted to make that kind of commitment and open herself up. But slowly over time, lots of emails, bringing Imagine on board, I think was a huge help as well. Finally, 2020, she said yes. I was a late bloomer. I was super modest about my body. I did not get my period until I was 16. I mean, we were passing around B.C. Andrews books in fifth grade, so for some reason it was okay to read about a brother and a sister locked in a closet together, but not okay to read about a girl, you know, discovering her body or finding her special place or questioning God. So I got to know Judy Bloom more as a person first, as a human, and I fell in love with her in 2020 when, when we started making this project. I think all authors get fan mail. You know, we have Lori Kim in the film who almost treated Judy like her diary. She wrote her when she was nine. I think she had, you know, she felt like she couldn't talk to her parents and like her parents didn't tell her anything. And so she asked Judy everything and told Judy everything. And the amazing thing was her diary responded. So it was just this incredible, really intimate correspondence over decades, really. Margaret, Margaret was the one for me when I was young. I think it, it still is in so many ways. I was opposite of Lee. I was an early bloomer. I got my period when I was 10. So to like read this book about a girl who wanted it yeah. was kind of mind blowing to me and also really comforting. One thing we learned is just what a badass she was. I mean, she was fighting back from the very beginning. She was pushing back against societal expectations for what a woman should be. The censorship years was a constant battle. The footage with Pat Buchanan, just incredible to see how she went head to head with him and really held her own. It's hidden behind that beautiful smile, but she has a depth to her edge too. Yeah. She is a fierce warrior and really wants to defend all authors whose books are being challenged and banned and stand up for the freedom to read, the freedom of speech, and for women's autonomy.